We've been playing trivia for years. Hundreds, if not thousands of games. Sharpening our ball knowledge to no end. The amount of useless football knowledge that's stored in these brains is becoming too much to handle. It's time for the first ever BDGE yeah. trivia turn. Let the band play. Told my teacher, dumb bitch, I'm gonna get millions. Watch this. In the project living. Damn. Spoke it till existence. Voila. I'm from where you can't trust a so soul. Welcome to my city. Man. Smoking skills, eating m and My yapa whole 50. Hey. Cut, throw, committed. Yeah. How does like a how does a Latin word end too? I, don't, I didn't take Latin. I took French. Oh. Would I have gone wide? I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have either. I think I would have thrown a random I or some bullshit. Too. I was just gonna say I know E on some crazy shit. That, that doesn't even make any sense. Ah. L. That was a good answer. I would just spell that Steve at the end. Okay, Divya. Whoa! No, you can't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> this is the biggest minus five thousand. Linalawa. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Live out of big shift on Linalawa. You gotta overcome adversity to get to the top, though. Dude, his posture is like this is crazy. <laughs> he's locked. He's so confused. How do you spell the end of that word? Because <laughs> obviously not W A Y. It's gotta be W B. Wow. <laughs> he's dubbing. No, he's Are there live odds? That's our guy. Are there live odds? <laughs> Holy shit. We need to go to Jersey if they have scripts. Or, I need someone to just rip. Right? <laughs> Enough of that. I'm never going to get that. Zeno Palatine. X I N O Zeno Palen P A L I E. Palatine. Palatine. E T I N E. T I N E. So, He's writing that shit like fake. Z -I -L -L -O. He's visualizing, He's yeah. Oh my sh no oh, shot. No. Hey, it no Wait. No. No, his confidence is like through the Good luck, Kai. It actually blows my mind that some people just like always sleep really well. It's like, yeah, I have no sleep problem. Like, what? I sleep like shit for like a month at a time sometimes. Yeah. Dickhead. I need you to leave, guys. This is private. Today is May 31st. Tomorrow is basically summer, June 1st. First thing Nick said to us when he walked in this morning was, hey, it's summer. Fucking be better. Fucking lock in. June 1 tomorrow. We're all finally back in the office. We need to lock the fuck in for summer. All right. Way more dabbing, way more clapping. We have a lot, a lot of shit to do over the next three months. We have the live trivia event. We got the merch drop. The summer comes around once a year. Obviously, you guys got a taste of it last year, but like this is when we do the most damage. So if you have shit that you want to accomplish this year, if you have platforms that you want to grow, whatever the fuck you want to do, like this next three months is when it gets done. It's going to come and go really fucking fast. So if you're not locked in right now, we need to get our shit together a little bit. You know, we need to keep the fucking energy high and we need to make sure that we're focused on what we're doing. So that means having extra meetings within internally with each other, me involved, me not involved. Like that's what we got to do. So we're scaling up the content already. I think you've edited like 10 fucking YouTube videos already this week. Like this is going to be platform to platform. So we got a lot of shit to do, whether it's this week, next week, whatever. We got to start putting the work in now. All right, let's dial the fuck in. Summer only comes around once a year and summer's where we could get the most shit done, where we can have the most fun, but also it's the biggest opportunity to, again, get shit done, accomplish big goals. So new energy, new mindset, no more down bad. That, that was two weeks ago. That was a week ago. We've shifted. Also upcoming, you guys have probably seen Sexy's trailer in this video for his trivia tournament. So, Jameson sees myself walking in as the fucking favorite. Not only is that part hype, but the hype part is that Sexy is going to be here next weekend. I've only met Sexy myself once ever. Like I've only seen him over a span of three days. 
in a single weekend. It feels like I've been working at BDG for a long time or coming up on like a, almost a year now. I've only seen Sexy one time in my life in person, so I'm always happy to see him. I think me and him are kind of like each other very similar in some points it'll be good to have him in the office for i think three four five days we got a bunch of fun trivia shit happening over the next month or so y'all already saw the promo but sexy worked on something where we're actually bringing in four six people from out of the office literally just dudes and dudettes like yourselves that applied to come into the office play against us in a trivia tournament sexy put him through a rigoring rigorous thank you interview process he vetted a couple guys you know some slightly familiar no shout out to spirio but they're going to be in here testing their ball knowledge putting up against ours so i think that's what everybody in the office is looking forward to we're kind of all sights set on that you know i've already talked my shit in the hype video i'm walking in thinking i'm the best and i am going to prove that i think i wore this exact outfit in the hype video to be honest for sure this is for sure the exact same outfit i'm walking in legitimately thinking i'm the best like I'm not humble at all in this, the slightest about this. Trivia a lot lately, like I've taken on such a big role of hosting. During the week, now we have four exclusives, five list games. I host all five list games and three of the four exclusives, so I don't really get to play anymore. So I, yeah, I'm walking in this tournament with like all the energy in the world just because I've missed playing so much. It, it'll be a good storyline. Like if I win it all, like yeah, Jamal won so much, he had to go to hosting. Like he was just too good for the other competition. They had to give him a different position. That's at least what I'm telling myself. So I am excited for the guys that come in. See Matt's brother again. We already met him one time. And so we'll get to see him again. He has the by far the most pressure to compete. He's going to be the one where it's like if he goes down, Matt is never going to hear the end of it. Matt is still in our group chats. Been for the entire time. He probably talks the most in the group chat as well. So that's like funny as shit if his brother comes in and just is like loses to like me like that would be that'd be pretty bad like if these guys come in and they're worse than me why'd you show up be better obviously my odds to win it very slim but you know at the same time i've had some underdog performances swept a few games you know what it is you know what it is i also i'm gonna make like six games or something or but i'm gonna be making some games which should be exciting because the games i make i like hosting I would say I like hosting more than I like actually playing because then there's like no pressure on me. I mean, I'm excited for guys to get in the office, some new fresh faces, new guys on the couch. Will's going to be on the couch one day, which is always exciting when he comes in. But yeah, so it should be a lot of fun seeing the settlements buckle. They are bad. It's like they're worse than me, which is like bad. So that'll be fun. So what we're actually doing, it's kind of wild. We are filming a month worth of trivia in a two day period. I'm hoping that nobody's studying because I'm not studying. If other people are like, are we, nobody has ever studied for trivia in this office. If people start studying now, I'm going to be pissed because I'm definitely not going to do that. It's basically going to be like everybody in the office and these other people just going like one-on-one -on, -one on one on one and one-on-one and one-on-one. -on -one -on -one -on -one. It's like a tournament structure that's actually set up. And he's been working on this for you know three or four months now, at least. So props to him for setting it up. I think it's going to be really, really, really fun. I, I don't think most of the guys in the office really have too much of an idea of like really how it's going to be structured, but we're all looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be good to see sexy, obviously. And it's going to be, you know, some competition in here. I know everybody, I think everybody genuinely wants wants to win i don't think anyone wants a fucking outsider coming in here and winning i don't think also there's like the internal like i don't also want any of these fuckers winning you know like i want to take it home if joe was in the tournament then i would maybe be rooting for him next to me yeah it, it should be fun and what should also be fun is something that i actually just launched i shouldn't say i i should say we even though I, in the same way that sexy's focused on the in-office tournament we have a live trivia event in july we are selling tickets to this live trivia event. This feels like maybe the first time I've talked about it in, in quite a while, but I had the idea of it a while back, like a live trivia event. I think we've built the foundation. We have the audience for it. We have a fucking crazy fan base for it. Vlogs from, I think the old office actually. And we are renting out a bar and it will hold a hundred of you guys. So we're selling a hundred tickets right now and we're doing a trivia tournament. So it's an in real life tournament out here in New York City, Saturday, July 13th. What is happening on the TV right now? We're just watching like a sex tape. Where BDG is working together, not against each other. And we're going against other companies, other creators like Jack and Snapback, like Nerd Sesh, who we collabed with a couple months ago in the old office. Underdog, Fantasy Life, and Almost Friday. We've got six teams of four people each. 
I'm not even competing in it because I'm hosting the event, but BDG obviously has a team. It's gonna be like an all day event where we're going to the bar and people can drink and they can eat and they can watch us uh, compete against each other. It'll be like a round robin, then it goes to the semifinals and the finals, and it'll be one grand champion. But I think the fun part about it is like afterwards, because it's at a bar and there's like a rooftop, anyone who comes can hang out with us afterwards. We'll do like obviously like a big meet and greet and we'll all just probably, you know, hang out and get wasted. <laughs> I'll probably sign like a quick 50 autographs for like 20 bucks a piece, a real low price. So yeah, that'll be really fun. Tickets are on sale now. Same place you can get the merch, bdge.shop in the Big Apple. Come meet your boy, hang. If you're in the New York area, obviously grab some tickets, easy money. It's just Saturday, come hang out. If you're not in the New York area, what I would suggest is like, Grab a bunch of your friends, make it a fucking road trip, make a weekend out of it. If you've never been to New York, you know, come up from Carolina, come from Florida, come from California. I don't give a fuck where you come from, but just come for the weekend. It'll be fun as fuck. So grab four of your homies, grab three of your homies, whatever it is. We got, I think, a couple promo codes running right now. YouTube 10 will get you 10% off. YouTube something else. I'll link it down below. If you buy three tickets, you'll get the fourth one free. Okay. So you've got a group together, get them quickly. I don't know how many will be left by the time that you guys actually watch this vlog. When you go there, you'll also probably find some merch, which is available by the time you see this. Maybe we'll have some package deals where you get merch and a ticket for a discounted price. I don't know what's going to be up by that time. We still have like four more days before you watch this video. So bdg.shop, got a merch, it's got our tickets, it's got everything. Really looking forward to that. Again, this is something that I've been working on for a couple months that I'm really, really excited for you guys to like meet us. Honestly, I think that's like the funnest part of doing in-person live events is getting to meet the people that are, you know, always in the comments chirping and are realistically our biggest supporters and like, you know, just enjoy the shit that we do because we obviously work really fucking hard at it and we're here every day kind of grinding away for for things that we're passionate about but for your guys' entertainment really so it's always fun to meet you guys in real life those are the things that i am probably most looking forward to at the moment this week has been kind of busy i guess monday i counted up all the merch tried to setting up the website for you guys to buy merch all right i've just finished counting all of our bdg merch which we'll be selling in the next week. There's our totals for how many we will have available. You guys have the pleasure of knowing if you bought a shirt from us, it was on the studio floor. You're welcome for that. You should be honored. I'm surprised they're not charging an upcharge for that. I believe the shirts will be around $40 a piece, but if you want yours trivia used, we will be taking offers of the highest bidders. Now we counted the merch, and that Fiappin is on low supply. 39 Yappin, 88 blue, 97 ball knowers and a plethora of triple stack. I'm trying to think, I feel like we always try to think of punishments for things. What if a punishment was like you have to you have to ship out the shirts for this week? Or we got a shirt ordered in New York and you gotta vlog yourself walking to that yeah. person's apartment. That'd be kind of fire. Wait, yeah. that's a good one. The first person in New York yeah. that orders a shirt. <laughs> Not even a punishment, we just all show up. <laughs> we all show up. <laughs> All right, facts. <laughs> it's gotta be Manhattan though. We're not walking the fuck. <laughs> we just pull up, shake your fucking hand, and leave. That's that's phenomenal. So, back to the numbers. One thing that was kind of an issue with the merch, as you can see, triple stack. There is 42 medium, 34 large. But before we made a second shipment, everything else we kind of noticed like extra large and XXL. Like we have a lot of big men who are expecting to order our shirts. So if you're petite, supply is low unless you're into the triple stack. If you're a big guy, we got we got you on deck for ball nowhere, the blue one and yapping. But I don't know any minies triple stack. It, is. it was like all the sizes, the resources right now to go small or like super XL. Mm -hmm. So we had to sandwich them. It's just the double X is like. It's like a bell curve. Well, here, here was my thing. It was like, okay, I figured, I feel like anytime anyone comes in the office or any of us, we're all like larges or XLs, even though no one's really an XL. Mm -hmm. I think about it. But I feel like every time we give out shirts, someone takes an XL. And then I'm like, all right, there's probably most of us in the office. But then as soon as I like, step out of BG for five seconds, mm -hmm. and just like normal people, everyone's a medium in the Every, room. Everyone is a medium. Every girl is like five, four or lower, and then the average male in the US is like fucking five, nine. Yeah, you know? no. Like everyone's low key. <laughs> no, the double XL is gonna be. Those are gonna be tough to sell. <laughs> yeah. We might just have to wear those in every trivia. Yeah. <laughs> just That's actually tough. be kind of fire. It would've been funny if we got like quad X and we're wearing the, like, it's like the suit idea. Wait, we actually, didn't we do that? Were you not, I don't, you might not have been working here. We ordered 
something that was like 5XL in the old office. I don't remember what the fucking purpose of it was. Oh, wait, actually, wait. <laughs> this is kind of fucked up, but we had a, when we were selling Don's t-shirts, we only went up to like, I think we actually went up to like four XLs on those. It was, it was, Jesus it was either three or four, whatever the stopping point was, there was a kid whose mom emailed us and was like, hey, my son needs a this XL size. Jesus and you guys Christ. Here. So I went in and like ordered one custom mm -hmm. pair of it to send it to him. We were kind of just like, this is insane. Like we should, I want to order one just to see. Yeah. That's like, it was funny. I wish you still had it. Yeah, I don't know what happened to it. I think at one point, we, like, I, so. I think we all tried to get into it at one point at the same time and ripped it open. I think that might be our uniform though. I think we just go double XLs and we tuck it in for trivia. We're good. Tuck it in. That's how we show up to the guy in New York. I can't wait. I know. We should actually do that. No, I'm, I'm down. First Manhattan order. We'll, we'll hand deliver it, plus we'll deliver their shipping fee back to you mm -hmm. in cash at $2.45. Each drop will do a new state. <laughs> you can take El Paso. Okay. Homeless people like around. I was thinking that. Our office, I kind of want to give them out to homeless people. Like, if we gave out 100 shirts. Yeah, we kind of get. <laughs> but, like. That is, like, 30% of our. Yeah, but our we're also, like. Inventory. Admittingly. It'd be gas if we just fucking. <laughs> like, you just walk around New York City and, ever, like, every homeless person just had, like, these yeah. shirts on them. Yeah, but we're, like, admittingly doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah. Like, not so the homeless people have clothes. Yeah. Just so we could see ourselves. Fat. And, like, I'm not, I don't even want to do it for, like, content. To be, like, one of those people that are, like, oh, we're, like, yeah. giving it out. No, like, yeah. There's money, like. I just think it'd be funny as fuck if, you know, every homeless person. Especially since they all got shirts. the patch on the sleeve. Yeah, it'd be fucking sick. I just like don't know if I could get myself to film, like have someone film me giving stuff to homeless people. Oh. That's a, like, Especially I can't like, believe people do that. That blows And they mind. put like this slow, sad music like in the background in the videos. Like you gotta be like mentally I hate fucked up to make content out of that. The one like, I hate is when they'll go to someone and the person looks poor and they'll ask them for a dollar. And if that person give it to you, And then yeah, they're like we do the weirdest shit yeah. in the cloud, dude. <laughs> Not us though. Oh, we'll sell whatever quantity we have left at the event too. We should set up a stand at Washington Square Park. It's like test your ball knowledge. Because there's no mm. way like, I'll write you a poem for a dollar. That's or like, true. rap over the beat or whatever. Like, that, that's the most eccentric fucking place on the planet. I feel like if we set up, to, like we brought that table, and we're just like, test your ball knowledge, I feel like a ton of people would come by and- uh, Get cooked. Yeah, and we could also just sell the ball knower shirts on the sand. What you doing tomorrow? <laughs> I got plan. Okay. At Washington Square Park. <laughs> BDG lemonade stand. I'm surprised there's not more lemonade stands in New York. I always see the little ladies cutting up fruit in the cups. Yeah, they be working. If you get into the right subway, they're they're out there like mm -hmm. selling smoothies for dollar <laughs> fifty, like natural. Like they just picked those kiwis this morning. Yeah. The <laughs> they have like their kids selling with them too. Like no school. <laughs> no. School hard no. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching this right now merch is available for purchase on bdge.shop you can get the ball knower you can get the tan of the triple color stack you can get the blue with the white logo or you can get the enough yapping so that's live go purchase that there buy it for your boyfriend girlfriend goldfish dog cat monkey gorilla planet of the apes whatever merch i have it on yeah go buy it bitch that's about it yeah, that's, that's the exciting stuff. We started doing some underdog live streams, involved the wheel, involved some punishments. Oh, no. I think you need to save your breath. That's like what Derek yeah. Carr would do, though. I'm already tearing up, dude. <laughs> Tony's like just breathing it in. I think the first go around was fine. I think we came to a quick realization that that wasn't going to be super sustainable. So I got the sense from Gut and Tony that they didn't think it was the most lit thing ever. So. Depending where we pick, it could be hell, could not be too bad, depending where the wheel lands. It's a wild. Could be call your ex. You choose Tony said he'd be voluntary for that. Yeah. Tony said he volunteered for most punishments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bring energy, bring ball knowledge. And it. Bring comic. Deep work on three. Jokes. Deep work on three. Deep work on three. Three. <laughs> So I asked them, like, how can we make this better? And is there a way to pivot it? And they gave a couple good ideas. Yeah, that was asked. I just don't think we're going to be able to do it many more times. Well, like one or two times, sure. But, like, 
every week of just spinning the same punishments and calling Yeah, we're gonna have, like try to have to date a lot more girls, aren't you? Are you on we're just gonna restrain one from one. Have to come up with a lot more exercises. Just, we just go through the exes like one new ex every time. A lot more fruits and vegetables we have to eat. Yeah, got a deep throat of banana. Wow, man. Uh, damn. There you go. As the Casey, week. Just Casey has a deep throat of banana. And Nick is in a meeting right now. When he gets out here, I'm going to pitch them their ideas. So we'll see next week's live stream. It's the exact same thing. I lost the pitch. Shark Tank did not pull through. I did not get an investment of 10% of my company for 200 grand. Or if it's a completely different thing, Gut and Tony came up with great ideas and I gave a great pitch for about a C. We are basically all going to draft 15 teams by the end of the summer. Yep. Basically, the, the two people who have drafted the two best teams are safe. Mm -hmm. The other two are getting sent on an El Paso trip. Yes. And you're agreeing to this? I'm agreeing because it's fantasy and I'm not having a bet. Like, I know a little bit more. Okay. And there will be a wheel each week. And you don't have to do the challenge battle, then obviously long term could obviously be a bad effect. Okay. But I, like I do that. think it shouldn't be like a mystery trip. We all sit down, this is what you're going to have to do. How, so, how do we agree on that, though? We just have to. Like, so the two people who won are just going to... They're safe. It's the same shit, but you usually just know what you're I think it's beforehand. an easier pitch, and it's also like maybe a scarier or easier reason in the moment to deal with the wheel. I like. I think that's a really good alternative, incentive-wise, to like be paying attention to the wheel and drafting a good team. So I was talking to GMO just about the doghouse stream. I think the idea of having it incentivized is like a really good idea, so that we're all kind of locked in and wanting to draft good teams. I'm super down with that. I don't think the punishment needs to be as intense as like the El Paso shit. I think it could be like very low stakes if we wanted to. We could have the wheel on the stream. We could not. I'll kind of leave that up to you. I think part of my concern with having the wheel, I guess, again, if we're going to do it, it gets like very hectic, right? Like if we're going to go and we're wanting to draft good fantasy teams and then talk about players, it's always like, oh, wheel, 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 wheel. We always have like five seconds to get any sort of conversation in. So I do think we probably need to pick between the two. I think if we just go regular general fantasy talk, I think a lot of that will probably end up being general football talk, which I think we've probably all kind of been looking for a little bit of like an outlet there where you're trying to either push it on the betting channel or whatever. We wouldn't really find like an outlet for it, which I, I think this could be more of that type of conversation during those. But I do like the idea of even if we do normal drafts where we're all drafting at the same time, like all four of us are in the league, I like having it be a competition. So something is at stake towards the end of the year, right? If we have 12, 18 weeks until the regular season kicks off, we're all drafting a team each week doing it. And the top two teams are safe. I like that idea. I think it incentivizes the right things and I think it will make the content better. Because today was, I had fun doing today, but I think it was a fucking shit show yeah. without any sort of direction. And I think we had like very little like football talk going on. And I think some of it was part of the wheel, but I also think we just didn't do a good job whatsoever. Yeah. So I think I was sitting down and I had no problem doing it, but I don't think like anyone else really wanted to talk about any football players. I don't know if your mind was on the wheel so much or whatever, but like, I think we could have done a way fucking better job. And I think like a lot of that goes back to issues that we've had before, which is like overall general attitude towards content. Where it's like, I know you guys are doing other jobs, whether it's editing or making trivia or, you know, doing the betting or doing YouTube shit. As much as you don't want to do content, if you don't, it's still part of your fucking job here. If you don't want to do the content, then you become less valuable to the company. And if you're becoming less valuable to the company, then that's a different conversation to be had. So, like, I'm not going to have this conversation again with anyone here. And I'm not, like, singling anyone out here from just the content today. It's just a conversation that we all need to have. And it's something that I feel like I need to bring up often is like there are just a million people that would fucking kill to be on the content that you guys are on all the time so if you don't fucking want to be here for it then say that and don't be here for it all right because like going forward we're not going to have that time that that type of attitude okay for everyone involved if you're here show up to fucking be here and if you don't want to then don't be here it's all in or it's all out like i'm not taking that shit again going forward for the rest of the summer so football talk will be better for overall content like again like you said it's hard to talk football when you're having to dial up people or find whatever the hell or your mind's on so many other things than just like the actual content where if we're doing competition on who's best players and what value we like where it's going to be more beneficial for the audience as well as it's going to create a constant conversation for them within ourselves it's going to create arguments which relates to better content i think the most of a debate we had today was when i was like gino smith might be good and we talked about it for five seconds yeah like that sort of thing i feel like if we had more of that that could relate to one 
we could even take clips of like stuff like that too. That would be just better overall content. My only concern would be what does that relate to the trivia channel? Like for putting it on there. Yeah, I, I think it's just an overlap with football in general. Okay. I think that's kind of what we found with our with the niche within trivia. We're like, of course, it's going to siphon people off for sure. But I think at the end of the day, the people want to have a place so they could hang out with us in real time and just like make that choice. It's like, hey, you know, anyone can watch content pre-planned and on their time, but like if they're making the conscious choice to show up and like hang out with us in real time, it's really fucking powerful. So I think even a small percentage of the people showing up can be big. But even if we like end up having a debate like we're doing the fantasy draft but we end up having like a, a debate about herbert for fucking eight minutes like this is the channel to do that on yeah okay. whereas like on the fantasy channel if i'm in the middle of a stream and i'm like going round by round and shit okay. probably not going to have that type of conversation okay. but it's like it, these drafts i think are going to be more personality based and like football yeah, uh, conversation right. based with that i think there's probably a way that we can integrate some trivia games to it i don't want to like yeah. od on it but like we were talking about you know what if we do some sort of you know, style where it's daily double, where like we hit, we come in with maybe like two trivia questions or some shit, and like depending on if you hit a player, like that's what the trivia is about or something. I don't know how it, I don't know how that becomes valuable to the audience. It's just, it would probably sit down and think about it for 30 minutes or whatever to figure it out. But I think I think there's crossover. And again, at the end of the day, I think this audience just like kind of wants to fucking hang out with us. And the following is built off of largely like entertainment, like trivia is. I think that's also like a, the value prop for them is the feeling of being in the room rather than like feeling like they need to show up to like learn and stuff like yeah. that. So I think also just scratching them in general would be probably better because it's going to be so repetitive. We can only have so many ideas that we can do on a couch with limited time. Yeah. Whatever. Like, there's only so many exes I can call, type of thing. And it's like at that point, <laughs> you better up your numbers. <laughs> that's what he was saying. <laughs> like that's like that's to a point of where when does it start getting repetitive, and then then we're gonna get like tired of it. Yeah. And that's when the content gets bad. Yeah. Where I, mean, I feel like if we do a draft every week, it's a new team every week. There's stakes involved. Competition is new debates can be had if something changes, free agency move, trade. Yeah. I feel like that will constantly be. Yeah, I, th I think it'll be fun. It's like a really good way to be competitive with the fantasy dress. Is there a punishment? We can all kind of like pick, be like, yeah, it's kind of suck ass, but. Equally. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Friday underdog live streams. Come join us. It's going to be a fucking blast. We're going to talk a little ball in a more general sense, you know, not so much ball knowledge, but just general ball. So make sure you got notifications on get that in your fucking bag that's that's the thing about business the thing about life it's like anything good anything that you're striving for is typically going to take way more time than you thought it was way more energy than you thought you'd put into it and cost way more money than you thought you'd have to invest that is like one of the, the lessons that i've learned in business especially when it comes to quality things everything takes longer is harder is more expensive and is more commitment heavy than you imagined things just take time and that's okay which is you know why sometimes you have to i've got, I got to pull myself out of uh, of mindset sometimes where i get frustrated if like everybody's not moving as quickly as i am i consider myself to be like a very high agency person or if i don't like something going on or like you know i want to get something done i just fucking put it into my own hands and get it done but you know with bigger processes where other people are involved a lot of times you are waiting on other people and other people need to show up and meet you halfway or, you know, it takes time for them to do their job or you don't really understand their job fully. So you can't really, you know, go in and say like, hey, you need to do this better or faster because it's just a different experience. So I find myself having to pull myself out sometimes and just like, Nicholas, relax, live in the moment, live day to day, enjoy the process. The merch will come in time. Trivia events will come in time. Everything will come in time. I will come in time. <laughs> Uh, betting channel has been fine. Uh, obviously, it's going, going. Uh, we have now two videos a week running on the bet side Mondays and Fridays. I'm l uploading the Friday video now, which will be up again. Normally, they're up a little bit later in the day just because I got shit to do in the morning. And normally, they're a little bit longer edits. So I'm excited for the best channel to be running two videos a week now. It'll be Mondays and Fridays. Hoping to get Wednesday in the mix within the next few couple weeks. We're going to start clipping up the YouTube videos from when we do group stuff for a lot of the short form uh, so you guys can kind of see it in like a shorter clip which makes it more funny blah 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 so then you come watch the full thing on youtube i think that would be more long-term success because right now i'm kind of like just bullshitting the short term of just like some plays here some goofy shit here and it's kind of just like mix and match i'd rather kind of be more consistent so we're going to get more of like a schedule down for that but the long forms are going great twitter's been rolling if you follow twitter we've been hitting some plus money plays for the nba stuff hoping to hit some plus money plays for mlb coming up 
just had a great day as you're watching this yesterday i went five and one uh lost on jaden mcdaniel's missing a wide open three that's the only bet we lost so i'll take that for the day though um having a really good time went and played basketball yesterday with jack that was a lot of fun i shot maybe one for 40 from three their defense has improved but and now thompson left thompson that quick release i get out of the 10 spot goes play time i guess they got away with one on thompson one to thompson they need it back to thompson lead. here is thompson can't shoot never been able to shoot but you know we still chuck it's basketball i do hand check all the time constantly like i will be in your grill i will be the most annoying pat bev type defender on you and then like outside of that i'm just like josh hart like my stat line after a game of 21 will be like four eight and eight and like that will be it every single time and i won't score more than probably five points but those five points will be value points or they'll just be wide open layups either one you know that's fine that's fine you know we take it we take those josh hart we need someone scrappy on the team that just gets it done because we have jack who's like actually good at basketball flashy we have berm who's like actually good at basketball flashy and then we have just like whoever else shows up to the court and balls the fuck out so like that's a dub uh, outside of that great time to just get out get exercise it's starting to really turn into summer now which is like an exciting time for everybody the weather's nicer the mood's a hot lot higher you can go out on rooftops do all the things like that's a lot of fun um, and I'm excited for it to finally like be summer because we've been flirting with summer for so long. To pivot back from the locked in mindset, at the beginning of the year, I had a goal for the company is to see two movies together. Two, and a goal of mine in 2024 is to get the group to see two movies together. That feels like low hanging fruit. Done. We saw Dune 2 and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. It's a pretty good weekend when we saw that. The movie was pretty good. To be honest, of like the trilogy, and that's the fourth one, it might be in last place for me, but it was a good movie. Good, good, not great, if you ask me. Next point, last night, today's May 31st, Thursday, May 30th, I watched Planet of the Apes, the Mark Wahlberg one from 2001. So I'm all aped out now. Like I'm all in on like a gorilla being my favorite animal. That's pretty locked in. That was a pretty good movie. But yeah, just wanted to celebrate the small victory of us seeing two movies together this year because two movies in five months or anything, January, February, March, April, May, five months in the year, that's a pace of like five movies across the whole year. I don't know if we'll keep up the pace, but that's that's really good pace. That's like two and a half X, the original goal. So shout out to that, because that didn't get mentioned in the last vlog. That felt like a good, not the good 12 minutes. <laughs> no. Fuck!